looking today at lab equipment and what it's used for in science class. So this is going to be an overview of the main lab equipment we're going to be using this year and kind of what it's used for. So let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about is containers that we use in science that hold liquid. And so that will be our first main idea, containers that hold liquid. All right, don't know why that extra stuff is there, but don't worry about it. So looking at containers that hold liquid, we've got a couple. We've got a test tube, all right, used for small amounts of liquid, an Erlenmeyer flask. You do have to know how to say that and spell it, Erlenmeyer flask. It's spelled pretty much exactly the way it sounds, and it's always spelled with a capital E because it's named after someone. We've got a beaker. All right, notice the difference between these. Erlenmeyer flask is narrow at the top. Beaker, big and wide. So beaker, B, big and wide. All right, and then you've got a stopper. Not really used to hold liquid on its own, but it's used to close test tubes and Erlenmeyer flasks. So now that we can hold our liquid, we also have to be able to move it from one container to another. So moving liquids, we've got a couple things we can use for that. We've got funnel. All right, that's pretty obvious how that works. You've got bent glass tubing, also known, you'll sometimes see it written as delivery tubing. All right, this is made out of glass, obviously. And you can kind of see in this picture how it gets put into a stopper. And that way, maybe there's a reaction going on in this flask, and I want to capture all the gas that comes out. And so by having this tube through the stopper, anything that comes out is going to go out this tube, and I can capture all of it. All right, we've also got rubber tubing, all right? It's a tube made out of rubber. You've got a dropper, all right, which is also, you might see, written as a pipette, all right, as a kind of a more sciencey term for it. And then you've got a stirring rod, all right? Stirring rod doesn't really bring it from one container to another, but can mix stuff up within a container. All right, that's moving liquids. We also have to be able to move solids. All right, so moving solids. We've got a couple things we can use for that. We've got forceps. These may look like tweezers, but in, we call them forceps in science. They're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit sturdier, they're not made for like picking out um, splinters, but they're made for grabbing small things. We've got tongs, used to grab hot stuff or bigger objects. A spatula, right, may look a little bit different than the spatula at home. And then a scoop. And those are both used for uh, moving small amounts of like powdered chemicals. Next up, let's take a look at measuring equipment that we'll use this year. All right, you'll use pretty much all of these at some point this year. We've got a graduated cylinder. All right, it's a cylinder, and the reason it's called graduated, right? To graduate means in this is to, to mark off or to mark off into a little bit of line, into little lines. So it's graduated and then it's got little grad gradations, little markings to show how much liquid is in there. You've got a spring scale. All right, you hang on it. The more it hangs, the heavier the object. A triple beam balance. I'll tell you the mass of an object. And then a thermometer. We all know what that does. We'll tell you the temperature. All right, heating equipment, everybody's favorite. Yay, fire. So heating equipment, all right. First thing is the Bunsen burner. This is also written with a capital B. It's named after someone. So Bunsen burner, all right. Gas goes in this end. Fire comes out that end. All right, to light it, you use a thing called a flint. All right, when you pull these handles together, it creates sparks here to light it. And then you've got a hot plate to your great and Disappointment, we will use the hot plates more this year than we will the Bunsen burners. They are a lot safer. If you're trying to heat up a liquid, say, these are much, much easier to use. You can just put the beaker directly on the hot plate. To heat it with a Bunsen burner, you need all sorts of extra equipment. Speaking of some of that extra equipment, let's talk about holding equipment. Not holding. Holding equipment. All right, this is stuff that holds other stuff. All right, so you've got a test tube holder. All right, you can probably figure out what that's used for. And then a test tube stand. It is easy to get these confused. A stand stands them up and keeps them upright. A holder will just hold them sometimes. All right, so stands will stand up the test tube and keep them upright. You've got a clamp stand, 
which isn't very useful on its own, right? It's just this base with a pole sticking out of it. But you use these other clamps, like a general purpose clamp or a ring clamp, right? These will attach onto the clamp stand and then you can attach other stuff to it. So you can see this end here and this end here, the ring clamp, those will attach to this pole. Then you can balance stuff on the rings or tie stuff to them or you can use the other end of the clamp to hold stuff in place. All right, we're almost done. Just got a couple last little bits of equipment. We've got safety equipment. All right, the one that we're going to use throughout the year. All right, you all know about it is safety goggles. All right, goggles, they're important. We're going to use them, all right? Otherwise, you go in the goggle penalty box. And then the last couple of things of equipment that we're going to look at is magnifying equipment. All right, we've got a couple that we might use this year. We've got a microscope, a glass slide, all right? This is used with the microscope. You put whatever you're going to look at on the slide, look at it under the microscope. And then you have a hand lens, all right? We will definitely, not lens, lens. There we are. At a hand lens, all right, you may call it a magnifying glass. We call it a hand lens in science because it's a lens and you use it with your hand. So a hand lens is just a little bit clearer as to exactly what it is. So that is the, those are the main pieces of lab equipment that we're going to use this year. We're going to look at some more in class, um, and you do need to know those as well. But these are kind of the main ones that we will focus on as far as the test and as far as using them in class this year. So definitely focus on learning what these are. All right, please make sure you write a summary at the bottom. All right. All right. Remember, for your summary, maybe take a look at some of these main ideas, right? So because there's something along the lines of today, we learned the types of lab equipment. Lab equipment can be used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and you need to kind of fill in the blanks from that. So two to three sentence summary of the main ideas of the video tonight. And I will see you in class tomorrow.